Mark and Trina Hankins invite you to a Holy Ghost meeting, April 23rd through the 25th in Alexandria, Louisiana. There are certain gifts and callings that aren't activated until you are saturated with the Holy Spirit. You won't want to miss this event with powerful praise and worship, teaching in the morning services on the person and work of the Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit demonstration in the evening services. Join us April 23rd through the 25th. For more information and to register, visit markhankins.org. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Ephesians 4, 23 and 24, where he talks about putting off the old man Mm -hmm. and he talks about putting on the new man. I mean, this, the new man is Jesus Christ, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Christ in you. So he says, put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge after the image of him who created him is uh, the same scripture in Colossians. Uh, But in in Ephesians 4, 23, he says, put on the new man Mm -hmm. who is, um, uh, put on the new man uh, your other translations say your mind, I get other translations in there. Your yeah. mind must go un, uh, undergo a spiritual revolution where it says be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So really <clears throat> one translation says be renewed uh, in the inner life of your mind. So that would mean not just in your thoughts, so to speak, though you do cast down thoughts and capture those thoughts and imagination. But here he's talking about let the inner life of your mind, your conscience and your consciousness uh, enter into the reality of what the blood of Jesus has done for you and who you are in Christ and you put on the new man Mm -hmm. and that new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him who created him. So that would be revelation knowledge of the word and you put on the new man. Hallelujah. And practically, you know, I was thinking... While you were talking, it reminded me of Brother Copeland when we were with him uh, the other day. He was telling us about how he had a total immersion in Spanish. Mm-hmm. Uh, he went several times to, yeah. to this environment where... For, for 30 days, days at a time. Yeah. And you're there and nobody's speaking English to you. Yeah. You're just hearing and yeah. you have to speak Spanish, <laughs> even if you don't know what it is. You can, you got to grasp, and how that hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, it goes from outside, oh, la mesa mm. or whatever, yeah. <laughs> uh, this word or that word in Spanish, it comes into you, and you begin yeah. to think that, and out of your mouth, you've got the Spanish, and you're be- you you've been transformed, uh, yeah. <laughs> so to speak by the renewing of yeah. your mind in that language. Well, the Word of God is the language of God. It's a language of faith. <laughs> Everything mm. is creative. Wow, what would happen if Christians would just do what the Word of God says, constantly renewed mm. in the spirit of our mind? Be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind. So when he's talking here about uh, meditation, yeah. one of my favorite scriptures is in First Timothy 4.15. I like that one. 1 Timothy 4.15. So Paul is a spiritual father to Timothy, who he calls his son. So Paul has really given Timothy instruction. <laughs> and, and a lot of times spiritual fathers, we have spiritual fathers today, and a lot of times a spiritual father will try to, to instruct and to edify a spiritual son and even to correct one. And so somebody said, well, we don't have enough spiritual fathers. Well, you may not have enough spiritual sons because a lot of times people, people want to get your word. They just don't want to be a, a son. And so their responsibility, so Paul said with Timothy, he was, a, he was a spiritual son. So what Paul said about Timothy, he says, no man took care of me like Timothy did. So when Paul's given Timothy instruction, then he tells Timothy the prophecies, the word, the revelation of the gospel, and he tells Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, 15, meditate on these things and give yourself wholly, completely to them 
that your profiting may appear to all. Mm. Interesting verse, isn't it? Meditate mm -hmm. on these things. So, so even though Paul had given him the gospel, given him the word, and gave, given him even personal words about his life, he told him, you need to process this by meditating upon these things. Mm -hmm. In other words, even though he'd gotten the word, apparently the full benefit of that word would not have appeared to all mm -hmm. if he did not meditate on it. You know, a lot of times people um, don't listen with the uh, focus on hearing and receiving and understanding. They listen with the focus on, oh, wait, I'm going to interrupt you and tell you what I think. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, yeah, instead of them listening to you, they're actually thinking about what they're going to say when you're finished talking. <laughs> and so I think a lot of times we do that with God. It's yeah. like instead of listening to God and listening to the Word of God, we're thinking about what we really want to tell God or what we really want to ask God. And when really uh, meditation is really to really listen and receive, when Jesus said, let these sayings uh, sink down into your ear. In other words, what he's saying is receive that word and, and not thinking whatever you want to think, but receiving that word and allow that word to penetrate into your inner consciousness. And that would be when you meditate on the word. And so Paul told Timothy, meditate on these things, give thyself wholly to them and your profiting will appear to all. If you want the profiting or the success to show up, you'll have to learn how to meditate. He uses that word in the Amplified, cultivate. Cultivate these things, and that makes me think of a garden, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot of work and time. And you've got to let that plant grow and at the same time uh, work the soil. Keep yeah. it turned up, keep it fertilized, water, you know. So you're cultivating something that's there. It's, it's not an overnight deal, mm -hmm. but that's when a harvest comes to pass. So meditation is cultivating. So when you cultivate, you're pulling the weeds out. Mm. So when you're meditating in the Word of God, listen to what the Holy Spirit mm. is saying. He'll say, you've been thinking wrong. You've been saying that wrong. Mm. Look at this, like he did for Brother Hagin. Did you notice Mark 11, mm -hmm. 23 says, Believe one time and say three times. Hmm. You know, so we need to cultivate w and listen to what the Holy Spirit is yeah. teaching us and meditate on those new things. We should expect new thoughts from God all the time. Yeah. And so how you receive with meekness the engrafted word. And once the word is engrafted, then it will produce its results. And so that's in James chapter 1. So mm -hmm. you can see this picture in 1 Peter. You can see it in James. You can see this in the Apostle Paul. And so now look at it in um, the book of Psalms chapter 1. It's a beautiful psalm. Psalm chapter 1. And he, he talks about being blessed. Blessed. <clears throat> blessed. In other words, people can tell when you're blessed. <laughs> right? They're like, well, look at that guy. He's so blessed. blessed. Look at that lady. Why is she so blessed? How did you get so blessed? Well, he tells you there in Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, the blessing, how to receive the blessing. Blessed is the man. And so he says, walk not in counts of ungodly, just stand the way of sin, sits in the seat of the scornful, you know. Scornful is somebody that's just generally sarcastic all the time. In other words, they're never really sincere, they're right. scornful, always find out what's wrong with everything. And so he said, don't sit with those folks. And then he says, <clears throat> but your delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So that means you're processing the word of God day and night, mm -hmm. not just on Sunday, but your meditation mm -hmm. upon that word is day and night. And, and you probably know one of my favorite psalms is Psalms 119. Yes. <laughs> psalms 119, which happens to be the longest chapter in the Bible. Have you memorized it? I tell people all the time, I tell them, if you'll memorize <laughs> Psalms 119 in the King James Version, I'll give you a $100 bill. Well, nobody's <laughs> taken it up. Nobody's ever done it because it's the longest chapter. They say, oh, I'll do it. Then they look at it, it's the longest chapter in the Bible. 
I said, and, and, and uh, you can't make mistakes, and I will actually follow but you to see what you got. Just about every verse is about the the word. Yeah. Meditating on it, and it's it's all about the word. Yeah, and really the word meditate. Actually, the the, the psalmist David says. I, I uh, meditate in your precepts. I meditate in your word. He said, I meditate upon your principles. So he, over and over, he uses the word, I meditate. Mm-hmm. And so that passage, Psalms 119, uh, where uh, the word of God, that word forever settled in heaven, as you meditate on it, he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them mm-hmm. from their destruction. So there's healing and deliverance in the word when you receive that word appropriately. And so there's a lot about meditating in the word in Psalms 119. He, he says, I delight myself yeah. <laughs> in your commandments, which I love. Yeah. <laughs> That's verse 47. My hands also will I lift up. Yeah. To your commandments, which I love. That's the Amplified Bible. And I remember fervently. He's just so in love with the Word of God. And uh, I like this in verse 54. It says, your statutes have been my songs yeah. in the house and my pilgrimage. And one way to meditate <clears throat> in the Word of God is to sing the words. We used to in the 80s. 70s and 80s, yeah. we had a lot of scripture songs where they just take scriptures and put you know, so uh, music with it, and that was a wonderful, wonderful way to remember the word mm. and to memorize the word, and just go through the scriptures, the psalms, and just sing them out. Praise God. The song of the Lord is just wonderful when it's full of the word of the Lord. Um, he says, "The entrance of your words give light, it's gives understanding light. to the simple." That's Psalms one nineteen. And 130, uh, I like it where he says, uh, my mama used to always quote Psalms 119, 165, where it says, Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing Those shall offend were her them. were last words. Yeah. She great was, peace. She was going to so if you want to have great again. peace, love the word, love the law of God, which would also include the law of love. And he said, And nothing shall offend them. In other words, there nothing will cause you to stumble and collapse and, you know, where you're not able to get back up again. So Psalms 119, wow, that's amazing. And I just saw this one right here, uh, Psalms 119, verse 97, where it says, Oh, how love I thy law. It <laughs> is my and meditation, meditation. Oh. all the day. So all day long. He's meditating in the Word of God. You know, uh, there's a song Keith Moore wrote a long time back, and it's one of my favorites of his. I like his songs. And it's, Quicken thou me according to all your word. Let it be unto me according to all I have heard. In every part of my life, I know that you're working inside. Father, quicken thou me according to your word. And quicken then means verse, that your life. Give me life, yeah. Each verse is one of these psalms in Psalm 119. Yeah. It's just beautiful. Yeah. So when he says, uh, meditate in the law of God day and night, then he says, what's going to happen? He said, you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Someone. Wow. Yes. You'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He says that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall Shall prosper. prosper. I mean, this would be like one of the best uh, success classes you could ever take and uh, best prosperity instead of going to some seminar, uh, you know, oh, well, we're taking our seminar here. Well, (laughs) to have your daily seminar meditating in the Word of God. He said, whatever you do will prosper. And when you meditate in the Word of God, the the Word is written by the Holy Spirit. And when you you meditate in the Word, you're going to be led by the Spirit in every practical way Mm -hmm. because He'll speak that Word to you. He'll guide you. We just talked to a young man yesterday, and um, he he was on his way to give somebody a piece of his mind <laughs> mm-hmm. and confront someone who had done him wrong. 
but he heard the Holy Spirit calm him down, just say, just listen. Because he had meditated on the Word, yeah. he gave way for the Holy Spirit to give him direction as he walked along yeah. and made decisions. And God solved the whole situation. God turned everything around. And so when he says, uh, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, he'll be like a tree planted. 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 So what he's saying is you're planted. But if you, this scripture has mm -hmm. reference to Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Mm -hmm. So you just got to keep these two connected because that's one of the most phenomenal connections. Mm -hmm. And Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8, again... The prophet Jeremiah says, most blessed is the man. This is the Amplified Bible. Who believes in, trusts in, relies on the Lord and whose hope and confidence is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river. It shall not see and fear when heat comes, but its leaf shall be green. It shall not be anxious and full of care in the year of drought, nor shall it cease yielding fruit. Woo. Wow, that's pretty amazing. That's a good refrigerator verse. So that's kind of a, verse. that's a good picture <laughs> of really what the Psalmist David is talking about when you meditate yes. In the Word of God, you're like a tree planted. So here's what uh, Jeremiah says. He said, he should be like a tree planted by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river. And it says, and when the time of heat or drought comes, then you're not afraid. You have no anxiety. Your leaf will be still be green. Mm -hmm. You'll not be worried and anxious or full of care in a year of drought. It says, and nor will you cease yielding fruit. That means even in a time of drought, a year of trouble, he said, if you will learn to meditate in the word of God, he said, really, the roots, the roots of your inner man and your inner consciousness go down into the unseen like you're planted by the rivers of water. So there's always a supply of life, a supply of blessing when you learn how to meditate in the Word of God. So you really need to connect Psalms chapter 1, 1 through 3, Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8, because you'll see you meditate in the Word of God day and night. And he said, and you will not cease yielding fruit. That means even in a time of trouble, you will still be blessed and productive. And it also says, wow, it's just amazing. You won't even be afraid or worried in a year of drought. I think you said this. In the time of drought, God will make you stand out. Yeah. <laughs> In a time of drought, yes. you'll stand out because your, your leaves will still be green mm -hmm. and you're still blessed. In a time of trouble, in a time of drought, I know in, in our lives, our ministry, uh, this has been a very difficult year, but really we've had tremendous increase all year long. It's been one of the most blessed years we have ever had. So what happens is the Word of God is designed to produce when everything around you is uh, in trouble. Mm -hmm. Trouble around you, you just don't have the trouble outside of you, get inside of you. When you meditate in the Word of God, you meditate on the faithfulness of God, you meditate on the blood of Jesus that Christ has redeemed you, and you meditate on that, he says, then you'll constantly be producing fruit and you'll not even be, when everybody else is afraid, <laughs> you're free from fear. You're meditating on Psalm 91 or you're, you're meditating on by Jesus stripes you're healed. Or one of my favorites is you meditate on Acts 3.16 where it says, uh, the name of Jesus, his name, through faith in his name has made this man strong and the faith which is by him has given him perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So you could meditate on that. That's Acts 3.16. So you could meditate in Acts. You could meditate in Ephesians, made alive with Christ until the Holy Spirit paints the picture of that and you see yourself redeemed, washed in the blood, cleansed, and then your confession connected to that meditation, your confession that Jesus said you will have what you say. So your words now through that meditation and your confession change your life. They change the results and that produce supernatural blessing in your life. This is the way, no matter what passage of scripture that you're studying, this is the way 
to process that word mm -hmm. so that you personally experience the blessing of that word. Jesus and his word are one. Yeah. And he's one with the Father, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, and we are one with him. Yeah. And so when we meditate on the word, he said, you'll be like a tree planted mm -hmm. by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river. You can always, as you're traveling through desert lands or whatever, you can tell where the rivers are yeah. because there's, there's green. And those trees grow by the water. Yeah. And we grow as we're planted in Christ. We're yeah. planted in his word. He said, come to me and drink and out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. We can drink his words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we'll be planted and bearing fruit. And people look at you and go, oh, they must be a Christian. <laughs> Look at their yeah. life. They're so blessed. What is it? You're planted by the water. So he says, when everyone else is afraid or anxious yeah. or worried, yeah. he said, you, you don't participate in that worry. You're not a part of that fear. And you're not uh, full of care in a year of drought. So and this it is says, something consciously. Yeah, and, and neither will you cease yielding no. fruit. I think what uh, the Message Bible says, you thrill to God's Word and you chew on it day and night. And it says, you're a tree replanted in the Garden of Eden, bearing fresh fruit every month and never dropping a leaf and always in blossom. <laughs> Pretty good. And then Taylor translation says, he's like a tree planted along the riverbank with his roots reaching deep into the water. Um, a tree not bothered by the heat nor worried by long months of drought. His leaves stay green. Wow. So if you and I could learn as believers, if we as believers could learn to um, meditate on the word of God, mm -hmm. that's when God captures your imagination. And so Dad Hagen said, use your spiritual imagination and allow the Holy Spirit, uh, Wigglesworth said, allow the Holy Spirit to paint the picture of this upon your mind. Amen. So you see yourself in the Word through the help of the Holy Spirit as you meditate and chew on that Word, confess that Word, and then allowing the authority that you have to remove every negative thought, disobedient thought, and bring your mind into agreement with God's Word. Mark and Trina Hankins invite you to a Holy Ghost meeting, April 23rd through the 25th in Alexandria, Louisiana. There are certain gifts and callings that aren't activated until you are saturated with the Holy Spirit. You won't want to miss this event with powerful praise and worship, teaching in the morning services on the person and work of the Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit demonstration in the evening services. Join us April 23rd through the 25th. For more information and to register, visit markhankins.org. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Do you want to study the Word on a deeper level? Do you want to grow in your revelation knowledge of the Word of God? We have just what you're looking for. Dive into studying the Word of God with the Spirit-Filled Scripture Study Guide by Mark Hankins. Compiled from more than 40 years of ministry experience, there are over 120 different translations included. Explore scripture after scripture on topics such as the Holy Spirit, righteousness, faith, and healing. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, understand who you are and what you have in Christ. Use this comprehensive guide in your daily Bible study. As Mark Hankin says, the whole Bible has the capacity to produce the faith for whatever you need to receive from God. Find out what the Word has to say about healing, joy, peace, and more. Sow it into your heart, let it take root, and watch it bear fruit in your life. Your gift of $50 or more will help Mark and Jenna Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and become strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. 
for your gift of $50 or more, you will receive this special spirit-filled scripture study guide. Thank you, World Mission Partners. Together we can, together we will. So we brought you this program again because on how to meditate on the Word of God, to challenge every thought and every imagination, the way you see yourself, the way you see your future in your life will change as you meditate on the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will literally paint the picture of that Word on your soul and on your mind. It literally even change your emotions while you're meditating on the Word because it is a living thing. It's alive. The Word has the life of God on the inside of it. And so as you meditate on the Word of God, you'll move from just information or just theology and you'll move into reality. You move just from information to revelation knowledge of the Word of God. There's a big difference from just having Bible knowledge and having revelation knowledge because that's where faith comes from. As you he hear the Word, feed on the Word, then faith springs. And you can tell when your faith rises up on the inside of you, everything else looks little and God looks big. So I encourage you to feed your faith, meditate on the Word, and the offer that we have for you, this will change your life. This book, I've had it out for for, I don't know, 30 years maybe. And it's called Spirit-Filled Scripture Study Guide. And it's a big notebook, a manual, got spiral bound. And you can just open it up uh, to any chapter. And it is actually the King James Version and 120 different translations of that scripture and studying on redemption. So you may go King James, then go to Amplified Bible, then go to William Barclay's translation, 120 different translations on redemption, what happened from the cross to the throne, the power of the blood of Jesus, to faith and how faith works, and all those different translations to the authority of the believer. One of my favorite chapters is the one on prayer, what Jesus taught about prayer, what the Apostle Paul taught about prayer. And then when you get to the chapter on righteousness, the free gift of righteousness that is yours and the power of that righteousness that belongs to every believer through the blood of Jesus. When you meditate on that word and you feed on it, it brings your soul and your mind into agreement with a spiritual reality. We call that faith. And then your words begin to line up with the word of God. And I'll tell you, mountains are moving. Not all the mountains are external. There'll be a few mountains leave from your brain, from your mind. <laughs> Those kind of obstacles will be removed and you'll walk in the light and live in the light of the word, the light of redemption, the light of the love of God, the whole chapter on the God kind of love. So you got to get this book in order, uh, download the messages on meditation and this book, Understanding Who You Are in Christ, Spirit-Filled Scripture Study Guide, 120 different translations. Woo! I encourage you to get it. Order the book or you can call and order it right now and feed your faith and you'll rise up and mountains shall be removed. So until next time, I'm Mark Hankins. May God richly bless you. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.